Welcome back, my wives. Welcome back, family members. Glad you all can make it back to another glorious day that the Lord has made. We're to rejoice and be glad in that we should. I sure did. I sure hope you did. You tell your loved ones that you love them. I know. We're not promised tomorrow. Give your life to Christ today if you haven't. With that being said, we're going to go right into prayer. Father God, we thank you for another glorious day that you made. Hallelujah. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. That I sure did, and I sure hope everyone else did. Father God, we thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. If not for your grace and mercy, we wouldn't be here. Thank you for our loved ones. Thank you for our family members, our friends, strangers, and enemies, Lord God. We thank you for them all. And Father God, we ask a head of protection around each and every one of the listeners and our family members and all in the body of Christ. And those that don't know you, Lord God, we pray that they seek you today before it's too late. That they seek you today. Don't let another day, another minute, another hour, another second pass by without seeking you. We're not promised tomorrow. Okay? I say this, and I know a lot of us not taking very much, much care to it and not thought to it. But nonetheless, we love you all. The Father God loves us all. He doesn't have any respect to persons. So, Lord God, when you when you say, tell them, I tell them every day that you love them, Lord God. We, they know you love them, Father. I tell them what you tell me to take. And, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for your long-suffering, your not easy to anger, trace that we all need, Lord. Glory be, God be the glory. Excuse me, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of your only begotten Son, the blood of Jesus, for remission of our sin, paid in full. Though we know we need to work our own salvation in fear and trembling. Of you, Father God, of course, the most high in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who's our Lord and Savior. Father God, we know that you are the Almighty. We know that you are the Father, the Holy Spirit, Lord, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Father God is a Holy Spirit. We know that. And he's Jesus Christ in the flesh. You see, Father God came down in that begotten body. And, and Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, was killed. The Son of God, righteous. Live again. Hallelujah. Resurrected from the grave three days later. We thank you, Lord, for our life. We didn't earn it. But we're so grateful to have it. Thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit that he left behind, that his Father left for us, so that we, he live in us. You and us and we and you, there ain't nothing we can do. We have the, all the power. The victory's already won. It's through the Lord, the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that we're able to do the things that we're able to do. Lord, help us. For those that don't understand, that's fine too. But I hope, sure hope you've given your life to Christ today. Father God, we can never say enough thank you. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. God bless you, Father God. You are so greatly to be praised. You see us through when we you make a way with us none. You see us through our situations. And you're there with us. No matter what we go through, you're there. I know that. I can testify to it any and every day. I can say that. My Lord, my God, when I'm when I think that I'm at my worst or I think something's going down that I know that I have no control over, Lord knows. He lets me know. <laughs> it's like I always see his hand reaching down and pulling me up. Pulling me up. I always see it. I always see you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. You said you would never leave us or forsake us. And I know that. Hallelujah. Today I saw. A beautiful family, Lord God. And I asked him to let me pray for them. And he allowed me to pray. And Father God, I, I knew you talked through me. You spoke to me. You prayed. You put the words in my mouth to say. And that family eyes was open. I saw it in them. They had that glimmer of hope. They had that glimmer of hope. The Lord provides for his children. He loves us all. He doesn't have any respect to persons. You all better know that. If you all haven't given your own life, it's for what are you waiting for? The Lord loves you. There's nothing else to be said. He poured his spirit upon all flesh. Not some, all. So if you haven't given your life, what are you waiting for? We thank you, Father. 
Thank you for loving us. Thank you for keeping us and not forsaking us. Thank you for your outstretched arm. Thank you for teaching us how to love, teaching us forgiveness, not only forgiveness, but how to forget. You forgiving us through all our faults and our transgressions. How could we dare not forgive our fellow man for his faults and his transgressions? We are living in those days now where you guys got to understand you have to make a choice. Either you are for God or you're against him. There's no in-between. There's no in-between. He loves you. He loves you so much. He laid down he he laid down his son's whole life. Son laid down his life for his father because he wanted to be about his father's business. Why aren't we laying down our life to be about our father's business? Are we better than Jesus, who was a holy, pure life? That was given for us to have life. Are we better? I think not. I think not. Glory be to God. Well, I'm not going to deed y'all any longer. I'm not going to. I'm not condemning you. I'm just speaking truth. I'm speaking truth. God is love. He loves us so much. I don't know how anyone could even think to turn their back. But, you know, we all have free will. And I say this. Don't let your free will Cause you to perish. That's all I say on that note. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Seek the Lord today. If you if you have not already. I love you all with the love of the Lord. I love you little ones. I love you older ones. We love all. We just don't like sin. So we not we will not uh, conform to the world. We will not compromise. If you live in a life of sin. We don't speak up and let you know. It's not right. You have to live a life of holiness. There is no other choice. Okay. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way to salvation. And no other way to the, pres the presence of the Father. With that being said, thank you, Father God. We love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Every member of our body belong to you, only you and only you, Father God. And we ask that you, that you please forgive us for any, repent. we repent for any wrongdoing we might have did. Forgive us for any sins that we might have done. Knowingly or unknowingly, Father God, please forgive us. We don't leave it like this, and we crucified our flesh, Lord God. And help us to guide our eyes, heart, mind, soul at all times, because he was waiting to pounce. We're not letting him in. Ain't no space in us and no place in us for evil. Not at all. These are holy temples, a holy, pure, righteous, knowing no sin. Life is given for us to have life. So our life don't belong to us, and our vessels are holy, because our Father, the child in heaven, is holy. Glory be to God. These holy vessels belong to the Holy Spirit, and he alone. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. And we seal this prayer to you, my Father. We love you with an everlasting love and we'll never forsake you. And we seal this prayer to you, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with a holy kiss. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Well, now's your chance. If you haven't given your life to Christ, please do so right here, right now. You have the opportunity. Have you heard the good news? The good news is Jesus Christ. He's coming back. Yeah, he's coming back. He's coming for a spotless, blameless, unblemished bride. If you are ready to do what is right and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then say this prayer. Don't just say it. Mean it from your heart. Mean it. That you will accept him. I pray to you, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I am sorry. And please forgive me. For my sins against your word. I believe you died on the cross. And shed your holy sinner's blood. And was risen from the dead three days later. After being crucified. Help me to seek eternal life. Live a life of holiness. A life pleasing and acceptable to you. Help me to study your word. And obey it. And repent daily. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for accepting me. Thank you for forgiving me for my sins. Thank you for coming into my life, Jesus, and being my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you said that prayer and you're serious about your walk, which you should be, because this is not a joke, the walk with Christ. It's not a religion. It's a personal relationship. It's a personal relationship, a, kit, a commitment in love. Okay? A love between you and the Lord thy God, and, and the Lord, you and the Lord thy God. 
Because he's going to guide you. He's going to guide you and he's going to change you. You're going to be changed. Trust me, a new being in Christ. Uh, what's the first thing you're going to do now is repent. You're going to repent. Please repent for your sins. That means turn from your wicked ways. What you were doing before, no longer. Don't do it. No more sin. You cannot sin anymore. You got to stop sinning. Not, don't sin on purpose. You got to be baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? And then you begin to read your word daily. Get on your knees. Seek him. Have a personal relationship with him. Read your word daily. He will speak to you. He speaks to us all personally different ways. But if you seek him in sincerity and truth, you'll know. And you'll be, he'll begin to speak to you different ways. All right? All right. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Congratulations, my new brother and sister in the body of Christ. And now let us strive for holiness. Holy and Sony. Remember, we don't do the things we used to do. We're striving for holiness now. And if somebody come up against you now, before we might have put up our deuce. Now when somebody come up against us, doesn't mean we push overs or anything like that. But when somebody say things against you, come up against you, you now you're going to be able to pray for them. You're going to bless them. Don't curse them. When they curse you, don't curse them. Bless them and pray for them. Okay? I love you all to love the Lord. And uh, congratulations again in your walk. In your walk. Your faithful walk. Hallelujah. With Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Well, with that being said, we're going to go right into a scripture. And that scripture is going to be... Mm, I was doing uh, Jeremiah. I'm trying to see which one we're going to... We're going to go with Jeremiah chapter 25. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, that is the three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord hath come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened. And the Lord hath sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Turn ye again now, every one from his evil way, and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord hath given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other gods to serve them, and to worship them, and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, because ye have not heard my words, behold, I will sin and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and never treasures up the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land, and against the inhabitants thereof, and against all these nations round about, and will utterly destroy them, and make them an astonishment, and in hissing, and perpetual desolations. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth, and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones, and the light of the candle. And this whole land shall be a desolation, and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. And it shall come to pass, when seventy years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity, and the land of the Chaldeans, and will make it perpetual desolations. And I will bring upon that land all my words which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah hath prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds, and according to the works of their own hands. For well, thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, Take the wine cup of this fury at my hand, and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. And they shall drink, and be moved, and be mad, because of the sword that I will send among them. Then took I the cup at the Lord's hand, and made all the nations to drink, unto whom the Lord hath sent me, to wit, Jerusalem, and the cities of Judah, and the kings thereof, and the princes thereof, to make them a desolation, an astonishment, a hissing, and a curse, as it is this day. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his servants, and his princes, and all his people, and all the mingled people, and all the kings of the land of Uz, 
and all the kings of the land of the Philistines, and Ashkelon, and Azah, and Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod, Edom, and Moab, and the children of Ammon, and all the kings of Tyrus, and all the kings of Zidon, and, all, and the kings of the isles, which are beyond the sea, Dedan, and Tila, and Booz, and all that are in the uttermost corners, and all the kings of Arabia, and all the kings of the mingled people that dwell in the desert, and all the kings of Zimri, and all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of the Medes, and all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye, and be drunken, and spew, and fall, and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. And it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup of, at thine hand to drink, then shalt thou say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ye shall certainly drink. For lo, I began to bring evil on the city, which is called by my name. And should ye be utterly unpunished? Ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout, and they that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the, work, to the sword, saith the Lord. Excuse me, Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go north, either evil. Behold, evil shall go from forth from north. I don't know what that said. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm reading north and forth from the same time. Excuse me, Lord. <laughs> go again. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. And the slain of the Lord shall